And here we are, Tim. Major Tom, how yeah, are you? We're good, and we're going to be together this weekend at the International Boxing Symposium. How really about fun. it? Yeah, that should be fun. Yeah, I'm really looking event. forward to this one. Yep. Tim is a featured tire, and Tim will be probably tying most of the day. I have three private classes, uh, paid classes. So, and I know there is still. Uh, there's still classes open on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. So if you're interested in um, tying some of my favorite uh, flies, freshwater flies, um, uh, go to the International Fly Tank Symposium website and sign up and we'll see you there. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yep. Somerset too. Somerset. Yeah. Somerset. Somerset. We like Somerset, don't we? Yep. Not Parsippany, not Raritan, but Somerset. Somerset. Wonderful place. Wonderful, Wonderful place. place. Beautiful Jersey. Yep. Yep. You so, live Tom, what, what little bit of loveliness are we tying today that you chose? We are tying the Letort Hopper. Uh, do you say Letort or Letort? Letort. Really? Oh yeah, and if you uh, and the the reason I know that is because when I was when I was uh, first starting at Orvis, Tony Skilton took me down there to meet Ed Shank and Ed Koch and Charlie Fox, and they all call it the Lee Tort. The Lee Tort. Wow, I the learned Lee something. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. So. How how do you get Lee Tort? Uh, with no A or no double E, I'm I'm a little con confused there. You uh, you live in that part of Pennsylvania. Oh, so and you you say the word color, you say Keller, because it has an E in it. <laughs> Tim, I, I'm not defending it. I'm just telling you what what they call it. Well, well, you'll never you'll right. never hear somebody from Boiling Springs calling it a Latort Hopper. It's a Letort Hopper. A okay? Letort. Okay, that's yeah. been. I've been calling it a Latort Hopper for better than oh, forty years. So what a rookie! Um, well, and you live yeah, closer get, to there than I do. You I, should I know. know better. But anyway, um, um, this is a this is um, an Ed Shank pattern from. Uh, the uh, Carlisle area of Pennsylvania, the, the famous Spring Creek, the Latort, and um, the Letort. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> I slipped. And um, it's an older, it's an older pattern. Do you uh, use this fly? I hate this fly, so no. Oh. Um, See, I love this fly. Yeah, no. This is... Uh, I think... This I think that I think that um, people fish most of the time fish hoppers that are way too big. Um, you know, if you look along the bank, most of the hoppers uh, are pretty small. Even even in the Western United States, the majority of the hoppers are like a size 14, 2x long. They're not big, and I think that yeah, they'll come up and they'll come up and take a big hopper, uh, but. Um, when they're when the water's really clear and the fish are fussy and they're refusing those big foam flies, um, I find this to be I find this to be a deadly pattern. Um, I think it's a good I think it's a good searching pattern. I think it's a good small stone fly pattern. Um, I, I just I really like it and it's pretty visible on the water with that deer hair collar. So um, it's a you know it's kind of a back pocket fly. I think when during hopper season similar okay. to similar to the way people uh use ed schroeder's parachute hopper you know for a lot more subtle uh hopper than the big foam flies yeah yeah well, actually anyway, that that one i learned about um uh schroeder's hopper we were fish uh, this was out on the kootenai with the linehans this summer and mm -hmm. you know we were chucking the foam as we usually do and the fish got yep. picky and tim linehan said put on the schroeders and i'm looking at it going oh man <laughs> and and it, he was at he was dead on it absolutely changed the afternoon for me and 
you know, you, you look at it, it wasn't that much difference in size, but but as compared to foam, it was more definitely more subtle, more natural looking, and yeah, yeah. Um, wow, yeah, big difference. But uh, and I think the uh, Letord Hopper would have done would have done equally as well. I mean, the you know, in pressured areas in particular, fish see a lot of foam and they see a lot of rubber legs, and you know, they get they get that fly ripped away from them or get hooked by it a few times and they're going to be a little suspicious of rubber legs. And so uh, I really, I really use this as a kind of a secret, not secret fly, but um, you know, I'll, I'll put it on during hopper season a lot. And, and you're okay with the torture. Uh, I mean, torture of a quill wing and then a spun deer hair head and collar on size 14. You're okay piece with that cake. piece of cake. Too. Okay. I chose it. I chose this. I know you I know chose you it. Working with deer hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually I, I have a little story to tell. Um, I, I have not been out to the Lee tort really? in about 40 years. I had two of the worst, you know, it's fairly long trip for me from here in New Jersey. And this was ages ago. And uh, it, granted, I, I had really just started out fly fishing, but I, I drove all the way out there twice and the wind was blowing. Uh, I was caught in that stupid long grass forever and ever. And if I wasn't caught in the, the long, tall grass on the banks, I was caught in the grass in the, the weed beds. <laughs> and it, uh, I did not, uh, two trips, I did not catch a fish there. Yeah, it's and, a tough river. Def it, it's a definitely yeah. a tough a creek, you know, spring creek. Um, not easy. Not yeah, and I, I tied a bunch of these Lee Tort hoppers. Then I called them Le Tort hoppers. Um, no wonder you the, didn't catch anything. For, for those two trips and say, kind of vowed that I'd never go there or tie any of these again. <laughs> well, too bad. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I was away having a great time, and then Joan sends me an email. You'll be tying the Le Tort, Lee Tort hopper. And uh, I've been nervous ever since. Great. That's great. Thank you That's so much, so Tom. Great. I picked that with you in mind, Tim. Now watch, I'm gonna now watch I'm gonna screw it up. <laughs> well well, I want you to let let's do it a little differently today. You tie the whole fly and then I'll tie the whole fly. How about that? Really? No, I'm kidding. No, that's not funny. <laughs> that's not funny. Uh, I was I was gonna have an internet failure before I had to tie mine, so uh, <laughs> guess not. Well, well, shall we tie? Shall we start? We shall. Our okay. Lee Tort Hopper. Okay. Do I start? Yeah, you better start on this one. Okay. Well, we've choice. never established when someone picks the fly who who starts. So I'll start anyways. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, yeah. I think if you pick, you start. Let's okay. let's make that okay. A rule. Let's uh, from now on. If you pick, okay. you start. You pick, okay. you start. All right. So um, I'm going to. Oops. Didn't want to show you that. Didn't uh -oh. want to show you that. Didn't want to show you that either. I wanted to show you this. Um, I I love this Spectre Blend Dry Fly dubbing. It just it's so easy to dub. It dubs tight. It floats well. And um, I use it for 90% of my dry flies. And I like to tie the, I like to tie the, you know, you can tie different colors. Of Kellers. Hopper. Kellers. Kellers. Central hopper. Pennsylvania. Kellers. I like this kind of, I like this kind of olivey yellow, kind of a PMD color for the body. It, it, you know, it's, it's close enough to, it's close enough to a lot of the hoppers. Um, it's not too bright and it's not too dark. You can you can vary the body on this fly, obviously, but this is the this is the color I'm going to use. Keller it, and Keller. <laughs> I'm not from Pennsylvania. I'm just mimicking how they say the name of the fly. Okay. You go ahead and make fun of those guys next time. You know, at the fly show, no, they're going to no. beat you up. They're already commenting. So Tom Baltz is going to beat see you it, up. Tom. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to be showing us something, but there you go. Yeah, I am. I'm, so I'm tying this on a 2X long size 14 hook. The reason, reason I, I like to tie these on size 14. It's a pretty makes a pretty small hopper. 
And I wanted to make it difficult for Flagler because I know he doesn't like tying with deer hair. But seriously, um, 2X long size 14 is what I what I typically tie this fly on. And I'm using a 6 uh, tan thread. And I'm going to start about a third of the way back. Start my thread. And I'm going to cover the shank. I like to cover the shank with thread on most flies before I start anything. It just, it just, I think gives you a more durable underbody. And I, I don't worry too much about being smooth or anything. I, I actually want it kind of rough here so that um, I've got some uh, areas of thread that the dubbing can grip into. Now I'm going to, I'm going to double wind this and I'm going to show you guys how I, hopefully how I double wind. I'm going to turn the camera down and I start in this case, the opposite of the way you would dub a single layer in that I'm going to start with a fairly robust bunch of dubbing and I might actually put a little bit extra on there. That might be too much. Oh, we'll decide. And then as I go down the thread, I'm going to actually back this up. As I go down, I, I so I dub it from, from thick. Yeah. I dub it from thick to relatively thin. And then when I get down here, this is going to be the, the, that part of that I just did is going to be the distance from the head to the tail. And then I just do a uniform, non tapered, relatively skinny area of dubbing. So, what I do, go back to the fly here. This, this is, is really an easy way to get a, a really nice taper on your, on your body. So I start up here where it's going to be thick. And then as I wind back, you can see it's getting thinner. And I've pretty much got my taper. But now I can use this uniform uh, area to just kind of fill in as I go forward. And I can kind of hesitate a little bit. If I want it a little thicker there and I can uh, put a little bit more pressure on it as I go forward so that, you know, you've got a nice, it wasn't in focus, so that you've got a nice, um, nice taper to your body. And it's, it's quite easy to get a good taper that way. All right. Your turn. My turn. Yep. Uh, I, I too, I'm going to start a thread base. I, I don't go the full length. I go about a third of the way back. And, um, I know Tom just said that he likes it rough. Um, I like it gentle or, or smooth. Uh, I won't comment on that. <laughs> You're the one that started it. I know that Joan's listening, so I don't think. <laughs> so for dubbing, I'm um, I'm using a li little different. It's it's rabbit fur. It's this this color from uh, Wapsie called Wood Duck, and it just gosh, it's just one of those really really great kind of all around colors. It, not too much different than what Tom used. Yeah, pretty um, similar. Yeah. Someone just asked what thread you're using. Um, oh, thread. I am also using uh, six aught uh, tan. Uh, this is this is Vivas. It's it's got some texture to it, uh, which which I really like. Just a little extra grip. And the six O, I, I on a size fourteen, I normally wouldn't use it, but since we're spinning deer hair, um, you, you need that extra little bit of um, oomph uh, power to uh, get that deer hair wrapped. And so I, you're not going to you're not going to switch to gel spun either. No, no. Yeah. Um, I, you know, gel gel spun. Uh, I love hate with gel spun for me. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes I like it. Sometimes I really don't. So I I just do this this straight taper. Um, and 
I, I do like that technique though, Tom, of um, the the double double dubbing, if you it, will. You know, it it creates a more durable body too. Yeah. Well, see, the other thing that I do is it kind kind of in that vein is like if I have a lot of dubbing here, since I've got mm -hmm. it started, I can twist this stuff and twist it up real tight, which also mm -hmm. helps to create that durable body and, and you can kind of you know you have to hold on to it but if you let go you can kind of throttle the thickness off and on as you go up right and so like i've got a lot there i'm gonna tighten it up again um kind of the, kind of the same idea really and i am going to come back just a little bit I want that ball of dubbing to be there, but I want my thread to be back at about the one third of the way down the shank uh, for me. Wow. Okay. All right. You're up. Julia, are there any questions at this point? Somebody, I see somebody asked for a materials list. I think if you, uh, if you, um, whoever yeah. asked that, if you go up in the comments, did you put post it yet? No, you didn't. I I actually I don't think I have it. I think it was sent separately. So I'll I'll get it from Joan. It's in the uh it's in the it's in yeah, it's in the Facebook I, post and it's in perfect. the uh, I'll, I'll post it in there. Okay, great. Uh, quite simple. The materials are dubbing uh a turkey feather and deer hair. <laughs> so Yeah. Okay. So next I'm going to prepare my wing. And the best stuff for this is a, is a nice model turkey uh, wing quill feather. These are, have been really difficult to get over the past few years, but there isn't any natural material that is as good as, um, as turkey for imitating a hopper wing. You know, perhaps a peacock wing, wing quill feather, but they're not, as, they're not really long enough. Um, and... So you can probably get, you know, some sort of speckled synthetic material if you want. But the, this, the original call for turkey, turkey uh, quill wing. And to prepare this, um, the best thing to do is get yourself some uh, artist fixative or clear acrylic sealer at a craft store. Um, you can also use vinyl cement. Uh, any flexible cement like vinyl cement or Dave's flex cement will work, but um, that stuff is a, a liquid and it's, it's a little trickier to put on. So what I, I do is I take a, a couple of quills out, outside because the, the stuff has pretty good solvent in it and I, I spray it lightly on both sides. And now um, that feather is, is, is flexible, but it's quite durable and the fibers are going to stay together. And it still looks, it still has that matte, doesn't have a shiny finish on it. And then you, so you select a section of this turkey quill, and you want it to be, you know, about a hook gap or so, smaller or, smaller or um, bigger, isn't that important? And you section it off, with your uh, dubbing needle or the point of your scissors. And then you cut it off right at the base. You're going to want all that, you're going to want all that length. And then you can see where the turkey feather starts to uh, curve. I'm going to cut it off there. And then this is the one one of the few places I use a uh, curved blade scissors. I start in the middle and I start at the center and just give it a little cut so that you have a little bit of a taper to that feather. You know, like a hopper wing tapers a little bit. And then you go back and then you go over to your your fly, your vice, whatever, 
and you lay this right on top of the body, you know, uh, extending a little bit beyond the body. Hold it on top like so and just come down, pinch it and let it roll a little bit around the shank and then inspect it, make sure it's, you know, pretty, pretty uniform. And then you come in with a very fine point scissors. Whoa, guess I didn't tighten my hook tightly enough there. And maybe take another turn to make sure that that's secure. And I did go down, I did go back a little, just a little bit on the fur body, but not much. So there we are with the wing. Very nice. Thank you. Should I go? Well, it's either you or Julia. I don't <laughs> think she has her vice set up. I unfortunately am fresh out of the model turkey and have been unable to get some. Um, a yeah, friend of mine, though, um, gets me these turkey feathers. It doesn't have the really great marking uh, that Tom does. Maybe if he's going to the tying symposium, he could find a feather or two for a good friend and, um, you know, bring it down. That looks like that's a wild turkey feather, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not yeah. a not an ozark or whatever those other yeah that yeah. one you have is and and they are really hard to get now um, they are I, I don't think they're you know they're not growing those natural colored turkeys anymore they're just growing white ones for thanksgiving because they don't have colored pin feathers because people don't like colored pin feathers in their thanksgiving turkey is that what it is yeah because yeah, that's, I, that's I, what i've heard yeah, you used to be able to get them fairly readily, yeah. and, and it's yeah. been been a while. Anyway, I, I just, it's pretty much the same thing. Just for consistency between flies, I have a, I go to the top of the lettering, I use just a, a um, two-sided razor blade and go use that for my measurement and then kick out the, kick out the segment. Now you sprayed this with fixative as well, right? I did, and it was a um, a Krylon uh, artist fixative, is what it what 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 it was called. Krylon um, is good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I've used that before. I also know that there's one. Um, our hardware store was out of it um, uh, by 3M. That's that's mm -hmm. also good. Uh, I like a clear, clear thing. Um, yeah. And so I am going to kind of do the same thing Tom did. I have the, I, I don't really ever know what's correct here. I have the dull side is going to be down. Um, I guess I'm, I'm actually making the wing more for the, for the, the tire or the buyer than I am for the, for the fish. Now I don't trim mine yet. I don't, um, Oh yeah, I kind of like, and again, I'm over. I really want that tent to be correct, and I am over the dubbing. Uh -huh. I, I I feel that it just sits a little bit better um, when it's over the dubbing, and the other thing that I do here is I'm going to wrap forward. I kind of use this as a uh, little ramp. On which all the other stuff is going to get tied. I like to get it fairly smooth like that. And I, I tend to just leave that, 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 that long until the, the very last step. Um, and then mm. I'll trim trim it off to see how it looks. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Very All right. I think we're at the same spot. Okay. All right. Uh, the rest of the fly is deer hair. What type of deer hair, Tom? Oh, very important. Mm. I like it fairly coarse. Um. This is a Wopsy Primo strip. 
I think. So, uh, oops, sorry, I need to switch cameras. That's a Wapsi uh, Primus Primo strip, and it's you know what I would use for a muddler minnow or something. I I tried I tried tying a few with really fine deer hair, and um, I didn't like it as much. I like it. I like to use a coarser deer hair, but you want a coarse deer hair with nice even ends. Um, it'll just look better in the end. It doesn't it doesn't really matter to the to the fish, I'm sure but I think it looks better in the fly. So I've got this um, nice piece of uh, relatively coarse deer hair. And I'm going to snip off a bunch. That's probably too much. That looks better there. So I don't know how much, you, you know, you'll have to tie a couple flies to figure out, figure out how much to start with. And of course, I'm going to clean it off. Um, I don't, I don't use a comb or anything. I just kind of flick it like this. And then, if you have deer hair that has a little curve to it, or and uh, you know, you can see this this deer hair is kind of curving. If you roll it in your fingers before you stack it, that will kind of straighten out that curve. And then I'm going to put it in my stacker. It's a Renzetti stacker, which I love. And then pull it out with my left hand. So, so, <laughs> so that I don't have to switch it around. He's, he's learning. <laughs> I, I got that from you. <laughs> what a so lifesaver. <laughs> and then I do have to switch hands. But I'm going to lay that right on top of the, of the wing. And I want it to go about to the hook bend, not to the end of the wing. And I'm going to hold it in place on top and come down. I'm going to spin my thread a little bit so it jumps back. And I'm going to come down and hold that on top about three times and really tight. You know, really bear down on it, maybe four times. And then, so you can see that's nicely on top. And that's going to be the, that's this stuff is going to be both the legs and uh, a little bit of a cider for you to see. And then I'm going to take the butt ends and kind of push some of them down underneath the shank to kind of cover up that gap in there. And I'm going to take one turn in front of it, and then I'm going to use my thumbnail to push it back. And then maybe take another turn in front of it. All right. And I, I want to leave these, uh, I want to leave these long, these butt ends, because it makes a lot easier to separate them from that collar that you want to you want to stay in place um, when I'm when I'm trimming it. So I, I like to leave them nice and long. All right, Tim. All righty, Tom. Um, so I uh, again didn't have a material. Well, I don't have a lot of it. This is my natural deer body hair. I I do like the body hair. Uh, um, it's, I think it's more from the sides of the deer as opposed to the primo strip, which is from right down the center of the back. But um, uh -huh. I think six of one half does another. These seem to be just a little more hollow at the base, uh, yeah. which I like. I'd prefer yeah. the natural deer color to this dyed tan, but but there's just not a whole lot of that. And for practicing, I didn't want to go down that road so you know gonna... that, that brings up a good point um is that deer hair seems to be uh good deer hair seems to be difficult this year and maybe it's because <laughs> hunting maybe it's because harvest season is just starting but um you know show season is coming up and i would just advise everyone um who is planning on going to a show this is the time to go and look at the the shops that are selling deer hair and find some good stuff. You really want to look at it. And, uh, 
Now, this is yeah. a good time to pick up some some good deer hair. Look at it, feel it, uh, really yeah. study it. The other thing that's with this pattern, because uh, this version, you know, a size 14 is awful small. The other thing you have to look at are, are the tips, the very tips. And a lot of deer hair has these very thin black tips on them. And because we're, you know, this collar is so, so small, um, you know, it, if they're long black tips, it, the, the collar becomes all long black tips and it kind of looks, looks weird. Um, and so you want something without those real long black tips. If you can looks find weird it. and I don't think it floats as well and you, and you can't see it as well. Yeah. And, um, I, I believe anyway, that, that maybe you can see the black tips on here. Um, yeah, that, yeah. that that's a function of a deer that's harvested later in the season. Um, and, and so they're, they're darkening up, um, you know, just gain a little more solar energy. Um, but anyway, uh, pretty much the same as Tom. I do like to, let me zoom out for just a second. I do like to snip, snip these tips off. I'll do it. You mean the butts? The butts, sorry. Um, just, just to even them up and clean things up, uh, before I put this in same, same thing. Uh, right about to the hook bend. Um, I do. I'll take a wrap, a second wrap. And then what I like to do is just kind of push down on either side. So those things come down. I'll squeeze it really, really tight. Take a couple more wraps. This, this is, you know, it, it, it's going to want to spin. Um, I, I like it coming down the sides just a little bit. Um, yeah, anyway, it's the legs. Yeah, and kind of similar to Tom, but what, what I do to really lock it in place is I'll, I'll pull back straight up and take a wrap there. Then I'll pull one side, take a wrap there. This hopefully is going to cover up the thread wraps is what I'm really looking to do that are back by the collar. Um, you guys that have tied muddlers kind of know that effect, I'm sure. And so I'm just going sort of top, sides, and bottom. And I'll do the same as Tom does. You do have to be careful of that quill wing. Um, a lot of times if you're pressing on things too much, uh, you, you can damage that quill wing. Done that. A lot. Uh, there's a couple of questions about deer hair here. Um, uh, first of all, uh, coastal deer. This is white tailed deer, and I prefer it. I don't know about you, Tim, but I prefer yeah. white tail. And then, where is the best? Uh, where on the deer is the best for deer hair? Depends on what you're tying. Uh, if you're tying bass bugs, you want belly hair from the belly. If you're tying uh, flies like muddlers and and this, you want it from the back or the sides. And then if you're tying comparadons or X caddis, you want the finer stuff up towards the neck or sometimes even down on the legs. So um, it's all useful. It's, it's all, all, all of the, all deer hair is useful depending on what you're tying. Yeah. Yeah. It's just making sure that you have the right stuff. And, and we, we've talked about this before, Tom, there, there are also pretty significant um, seasonal differences in, in, in deer hair. Um, yeah. when, when the animal was harvested and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the hair on a deer, say early bow season, sep September, October, um, is very different than it is, um, you know, on a winter deer. And, and so something else to consider. And, and like you were saying, you know, show season this time of year, it, it, it's a great time to be able to put your hands on that stuff. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. mo most fly shops are, 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 are good with that, you know, looking in packets and things, but you know, um, there's, yeah, there's just nothing like having it in your fingertips and, you know, going through and, and really looking at the, the fine tips and, and seeing how, how hollow it is down at the base, things like that. So, all right. I believe you're up, sir. Okay. So I'm going back to my same piece of deer here. And I'm going to grab, yeah, come up here.
I'm going to grab some. Again, it's fairly coarse. I'm going to grab a bunch, about pencil diameter. That looks about right. I'm going to. Now, even though the, the head on this fly is fairly small, uh, I'm just going to cut the tips off here because then I, I don't mix it up with the collar when I'm trimming it. Um, even though the head on this is fairly small, don't try to put a really short bunch of deer hair into this head because what will happen is uh, it'll slip out of your thread. I made that mistake when I was practicing these. So, you know, keep it, keep it fairly long because you're going to trim it anyways. And then actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little drop of super glue on that collar and I'm going to let it go forward on the shank. And, ooh, too much. Oh, well. And I don't think it matters whether you're doing this on a bare shank or a shank um, that already has thread on it. It's still going to spin okay for you. And I'm just going to hold this at an angle like so and grab the midpoint and make one turn. Start to bear down on it. Don't let go yet. Make another turn and just start to let go. And then let it let it flare and you want to move forward just a little bit with each turn and you want to you'll you want to stop when the hair stops spinning okay so that's stop spinning and then you're going to come forward and bring your thread through the deer hair make a couple turns in front of it and then squish it back a little bit with your thumbnails to compress it. All right, Tim. Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? It does. These these things don't look good at all, as far as I'm concerned, until the till the very end. It's, it's it all it's deep. all gonna be down to the last two. Uh, yeah, minutes, it is. Tim. The, la it's the all, last two It's moves. always a photo finish with these deer hair flies. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the things that I'm going to do, I learned this in doing muddlers and stuff. I am going to take this hair and just go, keep on going back and just force it back kind of on the same angle as the collar, okay? Really get it forced back. Um Anyway, same as Tom, I'm going to take a small clump of the body hair. God, we're tying this fly almost the same. This is unusual. Yeah, for, for the for the most part. Um, where, oh, there it is. Jeez, a little. Oh, but you use a comb. I do. Little little switchblade comb. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, lo love where's your plunger style hackle pliers? I can can you believe I am going to get through a fly without <laughs> using plunger style hackle pliers? I, I they're sitting they're sitting just off camera because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous without them. It's like a security <laughs> blanket. <laughs> and so I'm going to keep this like Tom said long long enough, but I am going to get rid of those tips. Um, again just just so we don't get confused uh with the collar tips and i got a nice nice little clump there i angle like this and then go once twice and then pull pretty much the same as tom and keep on going until it stops i do kind of i because I finished mine, I think maybe a little differently than Tom does. I've got uh, the eye is, eye is in there somewhere. I hope. I just take the end of my bodkin and shove that back. See if I can even find that little hook eye there. She yeah. Is. See, Rob said you you would have a special squishing tool, and you do. 
It's the end of my bodkin. I mean, come on now. Oh, that's a that's a special. I do have a special. I do have a special squishing tool that's, believe it or not, made out of plunger style hackle pliers. Oh no. Um, yeah. So oh, you're not gonna you're not gonna whip finish. You're no, on finish. on uh -huh. on these guys, I uh -huh. greatly. I am not really a half inch guy. I don't yeah. trust them. Yeah. But this way, we're not trapping deer hair. Yeah. And um, I am just, I will put head cement on there at the end. Yep. And I've learned not to snip, but to go in with my scissors and cut that off. All right. And then we got that all together there. And hook eye is there. All good. Whew. Okay. Fortunately, the right. next step is yours, buddy. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So I, I am going to whip finish. And um, I just don't like half hitches. And what I do is I, I need to die. I, I kind of look and, and look at the deer hair that's kind of sticking out over the eye. I turn it upside down and make sure that there's nothing in here. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not trimming that much. Yeah. I'm going to trim the head, but this is just to give myself a little clearance. So you can, you can whip finish. You can whip, whip finish these guys. If you can keep all the hair out of the way. Take a couple more turns and then I'm going to attempt it. See if I can do this without catching a piece of deer here. Ah. Uh oh. I'm going to start over again. I should have trimmed more, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And if you know, if you catch a, if you catch a, piece of deer hair in there, no problem. Just clean it out before you start trimming. The other thing I'm gonna do, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance. <laughs> you're, scaring, you're, you're scaring me, Tom. What are you gonna do? Oh my god. Oh I can't watch. There, I got it. I got it. Now the eye is clear. Oh, that is so so risky. You gotta have a steady hand, Tim. Gotta have a steady. Wow. Hand. Okay. So there. So now it's your turn. No, 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 <laughs> no. All right. So I'm gonna fluff this up to make sure you know uh, i like that i like that hair sticking straight up and down and then i am going to take a single edge razor blade not a double edge <sighs> right really no a double edge sorry double okay edge. i was gonna say single, yeah yeah yeah, yeah the, the the single edge just aren't sharp enough for this stuff no no they aren't i i, I misspoke and um you know, people ask me what brand, just buy the cheapest ones you can, because you're only going to use these for about two or three flies. And also, guys, just, just so you know, guys, with um, uh, online, Amazon specifically, you you can get like a, um, a sleeve of a hundred of these things for next to nothing. It's yeah. It's yeah. Kind, of, kind of the way to purchase them. You don't need the best. You don't yeah. need the best. You just need a single edge razor blade. And I start at the bottom. So I turn it upside down to make sure that's... Right, yeah. Switch your video, Tom. Oh. 
I start at the bottom and I come fairly close to the body. You know, I want, and I go all the way back. I want to get all that hair off the bottom. So I start there with a rough cut. And then I do the top. And you want to use a little bit of a sawing motion. You don't want to go all the way back into your collar. Then I do the sides. And this is a rough cut first. And then I do the other side. So that's not the finished head, but I'm, I'm getting there. Then I take my scissors and I do some snips. And this is why I kept these long so that I can just lift them up, get them out of the way of the collar and get rid of them. And actually, I like to start on the bottom. I should have started there. And come in here. It's fussy. It's fussy stuff. And there is no shortcut either. Um, it, it has no. it's it's yeah it has to be fussy there's no not if you want it to look decent yeah you know if you have an occasional one you can just pluck them too because they're right i'm sure there are commercial tires out there that can just whip these things out but um, yeah i'm not one of them and then then i go back with the razor blade again and I usually steady, I'm trying to steady my hand here against the, to get my final cuts, Final Cut Pro. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. And then, and then I'll also, again, use my scissors. So it's back and forth with the razor blade and the scissors. And I know I'm going to find something else that I want to that I want to fix there, but uh, that looks pretty good, Tom. I <laughs> all right. Yeah, I know when to quit snipping. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that's the hardest part. You always want to take one more little. That looks really good, though. Oh, I see something I want to change. There, that's better. <laughs> the fish are really going to care about that. Yeah. Last snip, you know. Let me um, make sure I'm in focus here. Let's see about, should I go? Yeah, there's a good tip from Jay. Use a piece of paper with a cut to allow the paper to slide in to separate the collar and the head part. This way you don't accidentally cut the collar with the razor blade. Good idea. Yeah. I actually, believe it or not, um, I kind of want to cut the collar with the razor blade a little bit. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. It's why I shoved everything rearward. Um, and so... I do have some of these these butt ends that are that are pointed back, and the idea is that they're going to cover up if there are any thread wraps down in there between the head and the the collar. You you kind of actually cut into the collar just a little bit, um, kind of a subtle thing. I I a little different than Tom. I like to really see what I'm doing. I'm not cutting cutting these all the way uh i just like to get rid of the the big stuff you know my extra step yeah but um i really like to see what i'm doing when i'm i'm trying not to cut any of those 
those tips that form the collar, but um, just to get it down to reasonable so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll go in. Okay, that looks good. Julie, why don't you start the voting? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do the exact same thing as Tom. <laughs> my, my first cut is right along the bottom. And I like it nice and close on the bottom. Um, to me, you want to be able to see that the dubbed body down there. Yeah. Um, Are you done yet? No. <laughs> um, a lot of times I'll dress up the face first if I can. A little bit there. A little bit there. And then go in. The, the risky one is the top. And I actually will cut just, I'll try not to cut a whole lot of them, but take it all the way in to the collar. I want to get rid of all the butt ends that are there if I can. Oh. Oh, I know. That's why God invented scissors, Flagler. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I am so nervous right now. <laughs> I'm glad I made you nervous. Oh, you, you really did today, Tom. <laughs> I knew as soon as you saw it had deer hair that you yeah, were good. I am not. Yeah, muddlers and stuff like that, not yeah. a fan. Yeah, I think we're going to tie a muddler next time, too. Oh, oh no, it's your God. turn. It's my, my choice. And we already tied a muddler minnow. Remember that one? Yeah, that I lost that one, I believe. <laughs> oh, see, that side looks, that looks good. Okay, now we're going to go back in with the scissors. And I've got my super, super. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Yep. I'm going to get that a little straighter on my vice. the eye so we can get some thread through there and i really do like these guys these um collar hairs coming down the sides and kind of sticking out like that that that's been a yeah a uh, big thing for me i'll always before i fish one of these i'll always preen it uh, off to the sides and then and yeah. I'll lift the, I'll lift that collar up if I can't see the fly and that helps yeah. helps me see it on the water. And then final step for me is I go in and just take my scissors and you know I'll start there and go ah man a little little too long we'll do that and hopefully it did it stayed nice and tented under there which I like a lot. And I think I should probably stop snipping right then and there. <laughs> oh, oh somebody said do a black net. Don't, I don't ever oh. want I don't ever want to even think about that again. <laughs> yeah. You, I, I think you owed me this after the black net. I got one here and there. We're gonna leave it though. Fly tire seven point six two one. I've tried a hair a beard trimmer on deer hair. It doesn't work very well. It, yeah, it does not work as well as you think it would work. Yeah, I I thought it might be. I thought it might be a, a good thing, but uh, no, it doesn't work very well. Sing, double edge razor blades and scissors is the way to go, and a good pair of scissors. Yep. I'm going to suggest to you all to vote for Tom's. Because I like Tom's better than mine. Uh, I do. Um, 
Well, let's put let's uh, do the let's do the the spin. The spin. Let me, I got one more little har to trim here. Okay. <gasps> you're still you still looks good, Tim. Uh, no, I not happy. Believe me, I know I've been there. <laughs> All right, Julia, let's do the let's do the rotate and spin and voting. Yeah, my freaking tail's wrong. That's the problem. That's why I'm really not digging it. It's a little better, maybe. like the underside I like the fact that i don't see any thread there but other than that i don't like it yeah see uh, i would i would trim this head i would i would trim this if i was not if i was still tying i would i would trim it more still go back i still go back and trim that head a little bit oh yeah. one thing one thing on this fly you notice that tim and i didn't do a cone-shaped head like a like a, a mother minnow. And if you look at uh, a grasshopper from underneath, uh, the head is very squarish. Um, so you, you want that, I think you want that profile. I think it helps to give the fish the impression of a grasshopper. Yeah, and I, I kind of looked at older versions the way folks were tying them back in the day. Uh -huh. And a lot yeah. of them were like a cinder block head almost. So yeah. Yeah, uh, pretty pretty square all the way around rather than yep. circular. Yep. I don't like my wing though; it's tented, but it's not cut right, and my collar's too long. <sighs> Your collar's oh, it's just a little bit longer. Than just mine. just a little too long, and it was a lot of it was not being able to see those. That's what I meant; those black tips. Mm hmm. And. Julie, has the voting been uh, set up? Yes, uh, the link is in the chat, and uh, they're coming okay. in. So I'll come back okay, at it great. about thirty seconds. All right, so we'll keep uh, we'll, we'll keep, keep spinning. Spinning? spinning. Keep spinning. Why don't I go like this? <laughs> <laughs> that looks a little better. Well, I can go far away too. Mine will look better. <laughs> I go all the way in. All right, we have a pretty clear winner here. I think I know who it is. <laughs> well, you you told people to vote for me. Well, if, it, if I don't, if I don't win, better it, than mine. If I don't win, that would be a that would be a, a <laughs> so tell us, Julia. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. You are the winner with 89% of the vote. There you go, I, Tom. I finally won. I finally oh. won. Congratulations. I'm Congratulations, go Tom. <laughs> so like I said, <laughs> thank you, Tim. Bring out the good stuff. You, you can take your Lee Tort Hopper and <laughs> <sighs> I'm not gonna try that again. No. Now I know. I know how to win. I just Chris picked flies with deer hair in them. Can you get you, the grill you, your your deer hair technique is fine though. I don't know why it I don't know why it bugs you so much. Well it does. <laughs> okay. It it does, and and mainly because I I'm uh, I, I'm so rarely satisfied with the particular deer hair that I have for the particular task. Yeah, and, yeah. And I end up uh, three quarters of it is sorting through patches of deer hair until I find something, and then you end up tying at least a half dozen flies before you find the right patch, and you're just yep. throwing out hooks and or cutting stuff off and. Um, yeah, and then, like, like this one, you know, my my favorite patch of natural brown deer hair, and there's none of it left. Yeah. So, 
all the yeah, years. Yeah, I went so. through. I went through probably eight patches, um, of different patches of deer hair before I yep. found what I found. So, you can people, you can never have too much deer body hair. No, <laughs> never. Yeah, you can never have too much. It's not expensive. If you see a piece that you like, buy it. Uh, it'll it'll last it'll last forever if you don't let the bugs get to it it will last forever right it's and if, gonna... if you can't use it on one thing you can use it on something else Absolutely. if it's if it's not good for comparadons you know maybe it's good for flies like this or maybe it's good for muddlers or maybe bass bugs but yeah, yeah. look look for the you'll you'll figure out what the good stuff is for particular applications it just takes some time yeah all righty, Tom. I'm going to go and, and mope for a while. Just going to lie down by my water bowl and pout. Oh, I'm so sorry, too. Not really. <laughs> said you had your I'll buy you a drink this weekend. You did. I, oh, will you? Yeah. And it, yeah, someone said I should have had my Gerba Mate, and I, I did. Uh, it didn't help. Um, made my hand shake a little more, but. Other <laughs> oh, that's a mistake. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, we hope to see you all at the International Fly Tying Symposium. We are not going to do a tie-off. Um, not going to do a live tie-off this year, but we will be there teasing each other anyway. Yeah. Uh, for the most part. So uh, we look forward to seeing people at, at the show if you're, uh, you're going to be there. So thanks everyone, and if you're new, if you were new to the uh, the tying today, uh, I want to want to thank you for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this will be rebroadcast. This will be on YouTube and Orvis Facebook channel, um, archived forever or for a while. Anyway, they don't go away. We oh yeah, them. yay, great! That's <laughs> that's wonderful, Tom. So we excited for that. Thanks, Tim, for oh, your company. Thank you, Tom, for kicking my... Yeah, great. <laughs> that was purposefully delayed, by the way. <laughs> Still alive? Yeah. Oh, no. Look at no, this, we're not though. still we're not still alive. Oh, I don't, I don't think you absolutely are still alive. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Couldn't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, we are. <laughs> having trouble connecting. Oh.